my fellow readers. It's been a little while since I have covered a middle grade, uh, so I thought I would bring up a recent fantasy read that I picked up. Um, <laughs> I'm not gonna lie, I walked by the cover and I was like, oh that's so cute! Uh, so I picked it up. This is Ava Evergreen, Semi-Magical Witch. Um, as you can tell, there's a little like manga inspiration to the artwork and really not just the artwork but really the the narrative itself is kind of that magical not really just magical girl magical witch story itself um even like some of the names and stuff very like reminiscent of a manga story or a light novel dealing with magic um really really cute uh so <laughs> i will say right off the bat this book gave me kiki's delivery service vibes very much like the book um if somebody liked kiki's delivery service this would be a good companion book or if somebody reads ava evergreen and wants a similar title kiki's delivery service both very similar um where you have a young girl well, they don't have to be girls. You have a young witch um, who at a very young age, as part of like their magical training, has to leave home and go to a new uh, town or village and do more practical work for their, their witchery. Um, now, the magical system in Ava Evergreen is a little bit different than in Kiki, but I will still say like I could see the parallels there a lot while reading it and not that that was a problem i liked both of them they're both charming and great for young readers um or older readers <laughs> i had fun um but in this one uh ava is actually the daughter of one of the main witches or or magic users um and so kind of felt or feels really um that She's a disappointment almost because her mother is very, very powerful and um, can do all of these amazing things and is well respected throughout the magical community. But she just doesn't have that same power level. Uh, she didn't even have her power awakened until just before this story starts. Um, and they were worried she wasn't going to get it at all, that she would just be a normal person. Not that there's anything wrong with that, but because of her mother's position, she feels like she has to have that kind of magic and ability. So when the story starts, they're like going to this bookstore where you do like the spell and you'll get the book that you need for your next part of your education. Um, and there's this boy that's like the top of, it's not really a class because I think he's like the only one, but it's like the, the top current young magic novices um and he gets his book and he's all like blah 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 and like he interned under Ava's mom and when he did Ava didn't have any magic so he's kind of one surprised to see them there and two just very kind of rude to Ava um uh, and the bookstore owner uh, doesn't have Ava on the list for like receiving books but lets her go through because she, you know, if she has magic ability, then um, maybe she just didn't get notified on time. So Ava does her spell and gets like five books or something um, to proceed. Because like I said, it's like whatever you need in order to study and advance your lessons. So then they have to go to their little magic ceremony that promotes them to the next level and sends them on their way to whatever town needs them. Um, and when Ava goes, one, at first she's totally dismissed. Like, they don't even acknowledge her at all. And then when she gets up there, the main magistrate kind of guy is like, um, no, you're not scheduled to go out and learn more. You're scheduled to, like, get drained, I guess. Like, I, this sounds horrible, but I guess if they have some magical ability but not enough to actually use or do any like anything purposeful then they get drained 
sounds horrid. Um, so Ava starts panicking, but there's like a loophole in, in the law where if there's any magic ability in the person, they have the right to go after that goal. So she does, and much like with Kiki, she has to find a town in order to stay at and help with the magic. It just so happens that the town she ends up at um, asked for help from the main magistrates because in this world there is this, this occurrence called the culling that uh, is expected, and so they want help being prepared so that they don't lose their people and like literally that's what happens like this calling like pulls people away into it and nobody knows what happens to them um that is not resolved in this like they have to deal with the calling but you don't find out what happens to the people from before um from what it seems uh and i believe looking into it there will be other books for Ava Evergreen. So think more like um, the Morgan Crow series. It'll be kind of like that where there will be other companion books that go along with it. Um, and so I think that sort of sets up what's going to happen in the future books is trying to find out what happened to the people in the calling uh, and can they, you know, get them back uh, and all that jazz. But yeah, this is pretty much just a little story about Ava trying to be recognized for her magic and help the town that she ends up in. Uh, again, I can just say, think like Kiki's delivery service vibes where it's little interactions with community members that she tries to help them. And there's always the bigger goal where um, her main mission given by the town is that she uh, in order for, for them to write the letter of recommendation for her to be accepted as a full full witch or the next level of, of witch training, um, she has to save the town from the culling. So that's like the main goal. But in between trying to get to that, it is just her interacting with the townspeople and trying to be recognized um, as an important person, as someone of value in the town. Uh, so that she can gain their support. It's cute. It's sweet. I liked the little artwork and the little um, creature here, which I now cannot remember what they're called, um, but they're like little fire, um, sort of like fire fox, but I think they have some other kind of like dragon blood or something. I can't remember, um, but it's a really cute little creature, and I loved the character in the book. There's not much else I want to make note of about it. It's just a really cute story. Again, it's middle grade, so it's perfect for readers 11 and up. Um, I think you could even read this aloud to younger children, and they'd probably really get into the story. Um, but yeah, it's, it's cute. It's fun. It's magical. Um, I liked Ava's interactions with her town people. Um, I like that further mystery that you kind of want to follow along with the series to see if they can solve it. Uh, and I liked her relationship with her parents as well because they were always very supportive, even though she, um, I guess tests very poorly <laughs> with her magical, innate magical ability. Um, they're very supportive that she still has value. And even though her magic might be small, she can do big things with her magic. Because um, at least she does get to keep contact with uh, her parents. Uh, there is a time limit of their like testing phase with these towns. Um, I think Ava ended up with a little bit more of a constraint because of the coming of the calling. But yeah, I don't know if it's good. There's not much I can like describe without giving more things away. Like that first part's not, that's not really a spoiler. Like it all happens. That's the, the setup for how the rest of the book is going to flow. Um, but yeah, our poor little semi-magic witch. She does have powers, and you know what? She's very smart. Um, and so there's a lot going for it in that way, too, because it's about a smart girl. Uh, the uh, writer is Julie Abe. And 
yeah, I don't know. I, I wish that um, books like this would have the artist like front and center for whomever did that adorable artwork because good job on that. It's very cute. That's it for this video. Until next time. Bye.